What up, guys? Do you think Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is watered down? This is a question that I got recently when I was on a podcast. They were just talking to me and they said, hey, you know, do you think Jiu-Jitsu has been watered down? Um, and it's something that I see pop up all the time. I know we talked about with Robert Drysdale some months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just something I, I see continuously popping up in the jiu-jitsu sphere. And so I figured we would wrap about it today. I don't have a conclusive answer, of course, right? Because it's whether or not it is or isn't really is your perception and your uh, opinion. But I have some ideas to chew on to consider um, that might be interesting to you. Uh, if you ever get into uh, a... Uh, back and forth with someone about the efficacy of jiu-jitsu or the you know watered downness if you will of jiu-jitsu so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode with me and eugene rapping on this uh, subject and uh, again thank you for being here as always thanks to our sponsors for helping make this podcast happen charlotte's web cbd you can check them out at charlottesweb.com promo code is jiu-jitsu 30. they have everything from the tinctures which are the eyedropper looking things to uh, the gummies that have different things like uh, melatonin or theanine and different uh, supplements and dietary supplements baked into them basically uh, for different effects, uh, everything from relaxation to focus, that sort of thing. And then also too, they have balms, which again, if you are getting banged up during training, which let's face it, if you're doing jujitsu, you're getting banged up in training. Uh, it can be a nice thing. Anytime I travel, I always keep a little CBD with me to help me relax. And I also keep the balms with me because especially sometimes if I get a good training session in, you know, the chewster is getting a little closer to 40. And so mm -hmm. uh, again, it, it helps out with just making sure that I, I'm not too sore or uh, I can at least help take care of some of those little aches and pains when I'm going to sleep so I can get a good night's rest. If you want to check out any of their stuff and get a 30% discount, again, the promo code is jujitsu30 at charlesweb.com. Also, thanks to our buddy Matt at Epic Roll, epicrollbjj.com. Um, doing some, cool, they're doing some cool stuff. Um, if you guys have not checked them out before, Matt makes a wide range of products for jujitsu, everything from t-shirts, uh, nogi shorts, joggers, hoodies, geese, the whole thing, right? I'm real, I'm a really big fan of his nogi gear, um, and I get my stuff, my jujitsu gear made from him. I get my gym stuff made from him. Uh, in fact, for any of my students listening, we should have our Derby City rash guards in in the next few weeks. And again, if you guys want to check out any of this stuff, you can get a 20% discount. If you go to epicrollbjj.com, promo code is jujitsu20 for 20% off the order. If you're looking for a product to try, I always encourage people to try his Nogi shorts. I think they're really good. Um, again, he doesn't have any Velcro short on the shorts, so <clears throat> you won't have that situation where the short is like basically in good shape, but then the Velcro just wears out and you can't use it anymore. So again, I've had my jujitsu Velcro, Velcro lists, non Velcro shorts for about, like it's going on over three years and they're still going strong. I wear them almost every day. Um, so check them out at epicrollbjj.com. Also, if you guys want to support the podcast directly, you can do so by going to the Patreon at patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. Upon joining, you will do, then be a supporting member of the podcast, you'll get an ad-free version of this podcast in case you don't want to listen to these ads that I'm doing currently right now. Uh, and then you will also get access to an exclusive library of content that has everything from uh, rolling sessions to little clips from seminars and warm-up routines that Eugene's put together to um, different videos that I have that have never been released to YouTube. And again, you get it all for a very inexpensive price. Um, again, just a little something where if you listen to the podcast and you like it and you'd like it to keep going, and again, check out at patreon.com slash the Jiu Jitsu podcast, T H E Jiu Jitsu podcast, and uh, check it out. And also, guys, if you want to get my daily email, um, which can range in ideas, we, uh, what was the one that I shared? Um, I've got a fun one coming up. If you, it's about an airport situation. So, oh, fun. <laughs> yeah. So, so for, for you guys that are uh, listening to this, if you're on my email list, you'll probably have gotten the airport email. So, okay. But if you guys want to join, I give everything from, you know, tips on training. I just shared just the email a couple, a uh, couple days ago was about cardio, um, some cardio routines that I do outside of the one. gym. Yeah. It's like, it's a very simple stuff, different protocols on how to do that. Um, and then again, I also share some different philosophical ideas, books I'm reading, um, everything and more. And if you guys want to get it, you can go to chujitsu.net slash join J O I N and get access to it. And, uh, and then you can, again, you can unsubscribe at any time. So guys, with that said, let's jump into this idea of 
whether or not Brazilian jiu-jitsu is watered down. That's kind of the question that we're wrapping on. And again, I don't have a definitive answer. This is more of uh, me and Eugene talking and um, maybe to let ideas swirl around in your head because maybe yep. you feel very strongly about something. Um, I, I talk to people all the time who feel very strongly that jiu-jitsu is watered down, but for different reasons. So for instance, I've talked to people who think jiu-jitsu is watered down because we don't do as much self-defense stuff as we used to, right? That like we don't do, like there, there's a whole array of self-defense specific scenario-based techniques that most gyms don't do anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people think that it's watered down because of that. And then I've also seen from the other end of the spectrum where there are people that are like hardcore competitors and they think a lot of jiu-jitsu is watered down because not everyone's training, you know, twice a day, five days a week, you know, grinding after it. And sometimes they're like, ah, I mean, it's getting watered down, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so I think my thought, and just this is the thing that I think about, when I look at the way that, this is something that Robert Drysdale talked about when we had him on his podcast, when he was talking about the old Carlson Gracie senior gym, right? Because in the old Carlson Gracie senior gym, basically it was just, it was just guys murdering each other. I mean, yeah. they're just going hard every day. Um, there was some instruction, but it wasn't heavy on instruction from what I gather. And they were just going really, really hard all the time. Try it's basically, you know, we, we make a joke. It's not the Mundials. It's not the World Championships. Chill right. out. But in there, that's how they rolled every rip. And, um, you know, we've talked to guys like Laborio, um, Ricardo Laborio, who was a, one of the, the best black belts that came out of that era. And he said that, and you know, he's like, you know, knowing what I know now, I would have trained differently because I could have saved some mileage, could have saved some tread on the tires, so to speak, right? Could have taken it a little easier in his body and still gotten very good, um, you know, and put a lot of focus on other things like strength and conditioning and things like that, besides just rolling harder and harder and harder. Um, and I think really what we've done with jujitsu is it started off as kind of this really hardcore Spartan-esque kind of thing. Um, and really, if you think about it, there's two different schools, um, which kind of goes to the same thing. You had the alio side of it, the more traditional side of it and they were doing these one-on-one -on -one group like one-on-one -on -one private lessons and classes and then you had the carlson senior which was like we're all training in groups so we're training yep. hard and th that was the big the big sort of demarcation between those two that was a big difference in the way that they trained um and again that's very similar to now where you know typically you have these hardcore competition gyms hardcore mma style gyms and then you have these guys that are a little bit more focused on um self-defense and that sort of thing yeah. and i think i think that both of them have a point but i think both of them kind of especially on the ends of the spectrum if they make this watered down argument kind of make a uh they make an argument that i think sometimes sort of misses the point of what we're doing so kind of going back to it with the way that the hardcore guys trained right for instance like let's say you and me eugene we're we're both uh i'm 38 what are you 40 now or 40 you 41? Yep. 40. You're, getting, you're going to be 41 next year, right? In August, yeah. August, okay. And so, you know, when you think about that, like if let's say that you and I, you know, we were listening to Jocko and we were like, you know, man, I want to, I want to like dust off the, the competitive, you know, miss or whatever of uh, my, my youth. And I want to go try this jujitsu stuff out. I want to yep. go see what it's about. Training like the hardcore guys do, training like even like probably like we used to do back when we were, say 2007, eight, nine, whatever, we wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, jujitsu is more of a business now, right? Like I think it's more of, um, but you got to think when the Carlson guys were, it was, he didn't never made any money off that stuff. He didn't charge half the guys. It was more about like getting the best athlete and the best mm -hmm. competitor out there. And the purpose of it was a little bit different. I think now people see it. They found so many benefits in, in martial arts and jujitsu specifically, um, and the unique thing about jujitsu is that we've talked about this before that people can do jujitsu at multiple ages, multiple skill levels, multiple abilities. There's some way that you can do jujitsu. Um, and I think people find a lot of benefits. So there's a larger variety of people that are in jujitsu. So in some ways to some people that may say, well, the skill set of some of these, you know, maybe black belts now that are just hobbyists, maybe lower than, you know, be before I remember going to a tournament, uh, even local, like regional stuff, right? And we had like maybe two or three black belts and you, everybody would be silent 
watching oh, the yeah, black belts yeah. move around and be like, ooh. It was God. like watching one of those old pride matches where, you know, just everybody's quiet. Silence. Everybody mm -hmm. was focused. It's not like that anymore because there's so many more black belts. So, like, is it harder to get to black belt? Is it easier? I mean, the pro the not the problem, but the what the thing that's happening now, there's a larger, you know, you have a larger sample size of athletes, and you're gonna have those, you know, those ends of the spec, those tails, right? You're gonna have the higher end guys are very, very high level. And you're gonna have some people on lower end are gonna be probably, you know, not as good as maybe some of the lower belts were back in the day. Does it balance it all out? Does it kind of is it all a wash in the end, right? Yeah. Well, you know, and this is something that, you know, Robert Drysdale talked about, you know, he's talking about like if, if he had to train like he used to, right. Because like Robert Drysdale, he loved being on the mats. He's still a jujitsu guy at heart. His hands he are destroyed to, now. Yeah. Right. But you know, <laughs> he's got a lot of wreck, a lot of damage to his body from a lot of hard training over the years. Um, he trained at the highest level, obviously, you know, he's not just a hobbyist, um, but he was talking about it. He wouldn't be able to do it. Um, yeah. And, you know, when you said it's more of a business now. Mm -hmm. I think I think you can people can look at this in a couple different ways, because in some cases, people look at like business as like dirty, right? Like it's for instance, like there's supposed to exist some sort of purity to jujitsu that like, it's not about money, it's not about this or whatever, which, again, I think it should be driven by the person's passion to help other people. 100%. I agree. Yeah. But that said, we live in a like America is an amazing place, right? Like the West in general is an amazing place where we have this ability to run businesses that are solely based on our ability to try to help people as much as we can. And I will tell you that from like my standpoint, our gym does train. I, th I think it trains more intelligently now than it did 15 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, 14 years How ago. So? When I first How so would you say? We'll go there in a second. Um, we'll definitely go back there. But going back to it, we train more intelligently, in my opinion. But one of the things that's like the hardest thing as an instructor, right, is to see one of your students who loves this stuff be unable to do it because their body gets used up and they, they can't do it. They either can't do it or don't want to do it anymore, right? And so for me, it's like, well, I like the fact that maybe we, we, we bring things down a little bit so that we can keep some of these guys as they get older and um, maybe they're not in the prime of their life, right? They can still do some stuff. You know, they yep. can't do it like they did when they were 25, but well, hell, who can? But they can still get active. They can still learn. They can still engage and they can just modulate the rolling down a little bit and they can roll, right? And they can train uh, and they can still get plenty of benefits from it, both from their mind, uh, body and everything else. And yes. so I think that, that to me, like when I look at it, it is a business, but at the same time, when your business is basically trying to, you know, help people and help them stay active and to bring something positive into their life, it's a beautiful thing. And when I look at it, that's really what sometimes what I'm doing is like, you know, like when it, with one of the guys gets hurt, I'm like, all right, what do we got to do to help him and adjust? And maybe, you know, we roll a little softer with him while he's healing up or getting, you know, uh, healed up or that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, to your, to your question, as far as training more intelligently. One of the things that I think, again, we all used to do this is in lieu of like actually like sharpening specific skills yep. and working on specific skills, we would just go hard, right? So for instance, as an example with MMA, this was really bad. And MMA, all we would do is just go hard. That was like, uh, all right, guys, we'll just do some workout stuff and let's kill each other. Um, you know, we instead of doing a lot of real, real positional stuff, um, and focusing on developing different skills, both through drilling and live formats, we just go hard. Um, and again, you do, you develop a, a level of toughness that way. Um, yeah. and you develop, you develop some, some different abilities that way. Um, but again, the, the shelf life's not so great. And yeah. in jujitsu back in the day, I mean, I remember there were times, for example, where there used to be another coach at the gym named Brent. Um, and like, I felt like there was a period where Brent was teaching and I was teaching and literally all we were doing is I, I don't know if we did this like knowingly but I, I i remember feeling this like where you know i would hear the guys man brent's class killed me oh my god i was so tired god whatever so i'm like well i'm gonna kill you even worse than you know like and then it became this thing yeah, where we're just we're just we're just murdering the, <laughs> the students because you know they're, they're talking about how brutal it is and you know there's a certain level sometimes i think of um 
there's a certain level of like masochism from people, right? Like you come in and you like, you love, like you love being done and feeling like you've been destroyed, right? I don't yep. know what that is, but it feels great. <laughs> but at the same time, is that going to make you a better person? Maybe there are times for it, um, but there's, it's just like lifting. I can go in and get, get a great lift and stimulate muscle growth, stimulate my body, but I don't actually have to destroy myself. Um, and I think it's the same thing with jiu-jitsu. You, get in, you can get some great work in. Um, yep. You can develop a lot of ability skill-wise, and you don't have to destroy yourself constantly. Um, and you can do this through a ton of different ways, positional rolling. Um, you can go through and do some different forms of drilling, right? Um, there's all kinds of ways to do this, but it doesn't just have to be like, all right, guys, here's a couple techniques and let's murder each other now. It's yep. like there's a lot of a lot of different things that you can implement to train at like sort of a sub-maximal intensity and get a lot of technical benefit. You, you know, I think one thing, yes, besides like the mo modulating the intensity of training and, and the thing with the early days is kind of like why people may say it's watered down is because you would kind of uh, trim the fat, so to speak, right? If people weren't really tough, quote unquote tough, or could kind of deal with some of the really grueling stuff, they would kind of find their mm -hmm. way out eventually. And so you kind of would <coughs> trim the fat essentially. And you have some of these kind of hardcore guys. Like when I started, it wasn't, I mean, I mean it was tough. Like we, we went hard, you know, and, uh, at, at the first gym I started and even at the, at, at Derby city, you know, it was, there was some brutal training sessions. I mean, we'd be going hard for multiple rounds. Um, I think that is that the best way to train? Sometimes it can be, and sometimes it's not the best way. You have to modulate. You can't do that all the time, like we mentioned. The other thing that I think we train um, smarter, and one thing that you guys started implementing, um, kind of you led it, led this thing, is you started doing kind of modules. I was talking to Brandon, who's a visually impaired at the gym. Right? I was talking to him yesterday, and I was like, hey, uh, you know, he was a class I taught yesterday, and we were just kind of talking in the locker room, and I was like, I was like, you know, how is there a better way for me to to teach you or to show you or whatever? He's like, look, like as someone that's visually impaired, I like I feel it and I see it. I memorize a lot of the techniques in some ways, but I also get so many reps in because we're doing similar stuff over and over. So I think that people get a better knowledge of techniques. Uh, we, we teach better now, essentially, you know, they get a better sure. knowledge and understanding of techniques, whether you have some kind of um learning or any kind of visual whatever kind of impairment you may have that may make it learning a little bit more challenging but i think people have better knowledge of techniques we do a lot more positional stuff um i think people are more aware of dangers of, of you know getting caught in a submission or being in a submission or when they're in trouble and i think people also have more time in those positions whether it's leg locks or whatever it is and the, don't become as foreign to you so i think mm -hmm. we're training smart or protecting mm -hmm. each other so people are on the mats more and hell yeah you can get some tough rolls in if you're just doing positional work you're just trying to get out of back mount or something you know i mean yep. it, you, you limit some of the scrambles and when it's time four rounds but maybe we don't have as many of these crazy hard full rounds and we have some tough positional work which i think overall is beneficial for learning and i think understanding and also skill set because some of these guys now you know even blue belt purple belt are very high level you know in certain things and you had that but now uh, almost like you know get, go, getting a little off topic we have specialists like we have like purple belts that really are specialists in certain things they have black belt level techniques in certain areas i don't know if we had that as much back in the day people were kind of generally pretty tough all around but we, now we like specialists yeah like, yeah i, mean, I think you chad, can like i mean chad and um you know even yeah. some of you guys like you i mean you had a you had a really good loop choke yeah um you know from your guard very early on like in your is a yeah. purple belt, right so like that yeah. was there so yeah you, you know I, and i don't know but i think we do train smarter o overall like and i think that the skill set still develops i think you still get that i think maybe there's a larger variance of people you know you got like you know your 50 year old dad or mom or whoever that's just there for kind of more of a exercise type thing like my wife who's there just because really the kids show up and she don't want to sit on the on the bench watching so she mm -hmm. gets in there and gets after it she doesn't really have any aspirations to compete but she is building that skill set and so i think you have a lot more people in it um but again look at the elite of the elite i think those guys like a gordon ryan could beat the elite 10 years ago easily of course 100%. You know. and, and they train super hard. Um, yeah. And then there's the other side of it, which is like the self-defense side, right? Which I've Correct. seen people yeah. talk about this a lot where um, they'll say that jiu-jitsu is 
watered down because it's too sporty. We don't do self-defense techniques and um, it's lost its martial nature, right? Yep. Um, and, and I and I, under, I hear people to a degree, right? I do hear people because I think there's some of that is maybe true, right? Um, but I think it's sometimes they, there's a few things. One, let's talk about like some of the old self-defense techniques. Like the the stuff that you see that a lot of times in demos where people like reach out yeah. and grab and, you know, they're grabbing, yeah. holding your shirt and like, hey, buddy, you know, whatever. And then you do some crazy throw. I mean, to me, all that stuff's bullshit. It's Correct. like I looked at that. I looked at that stuff from the moment I started training. I was like, eh, that wouldn't work. Yeah, I was like, we, we watched it. It's like, I mean, I'm not saying it couldn't work, but I'm like, for the average person, it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, number one, because, again, if anybody's actually been in a fight on the street, people don't like. I'm not saying it never happens, but like, I've seen a lot of fights. We have phones, there's fights everywhere. People don't, if you're in a street fight, it usually erupts very quickly, right? It goes from like, there's not this gradual, I'm going to grab your shirt, hey buddy, whatever. There's right. going to be this thing where you start seeing people, you'll start seeing their body blade, where they start making themselves narrow and they start getting whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, they start attacking, it's very chaotic. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, the idea that like a lot of these scenario based things, they, they look cool. Um, but to me, they're, they're very unrealistic because they don't happen very often. And two, you can't train those at live, right? Like, cause again, it, the whole, to me, the whole, the, the mechanism that makes all the combat sports effective um, and superior to a lot of the, the non-combat sport variations is the methodology behind the training, right? Which was, we want to remove certain aspects so that we can train full speed. So for instance, like, you know, we get this from essentially from like jujitsu comes from judo. Right. And so, you know, we, we did, you know, Kano was like, we're going to take out some of these more deadly techniques from yeah. traditional jujitsu. And we're going to do this sported version that pretty much everybody can do. It'll be more widely available, widely accessible to more people. That was his, his mission, right? Um, get it in schools for children and everything else. Uh, but then it will still have a martial nature to it. It still has a fighting nature to it that can be used when necessary. Now, just like judo, judo's got a ton of techniques that are not going to be great for a fight on the street. But at its core, there's some really simple stuff that can be very effective. Right. Like, for instance, like an asotagari. An asotagari is an incredibly simple trip, but for the person who's never trained judo, it's going to hit hard. And again, the, for you guys listening in judo, the reason why, if you ever watch a match, if they hit their back flat on the, the mat, the reason that's considered it done it, upon, right? That's over. The match is over is because in their philosophy, which is true. If I throw you flat on your back on concrete, you're done. Like that's, yep. there is no getting back up. Right. Yep. Um, and so again, you know, so there's still that martial nature wrestling. When I got into high school wrestling, there was no talk of this being a fighting style. It was like, we're going to go compete. But I quickly learned because, you know, I was, I used to get picked on. And again, you know, the, the bullies didn't know that I had been doing, learning how to do double eggs. And then one day I get picked on by a bully. I double egg him into an old radiator in my school. And that was it. Like he didn't want to fight yeah. anymore. I was like, wow, this is like a superpower. So this is fighting, even though it's disguised as a sport. Um, yeah. Even though that a lot of the stuff in wrestling, like I'm not going to do a, I'm not going to do a funk roll in the middle of a, a street fight. Right. And then there's jujitsu. Yes. There is a lot of stuff that we do in jujitsu that would not be applicable um, in a fight situation, just like the other two things that I just mentioned. Right. Right. But that doesn't mean that at its core, it doesn't have some effectiveness such as being able to take someone down, uh, being able to hold someone down and control them on the ground, being able to apply a, a basic submission hold. And again, you know, there's, you basically simplify all the stuff that you would do. You take out all the flippy, whatever stuff, yeah. and you go down to the really, the basic white belt stuff is really what you use in a fight. And then, but the thing is, is that when you think about all these three arts that I just mentioned, what makes them effective is that it's trained under live conditions even if it's not the most realistic conditions, right? Because again, if we were going to train the, under the most realistic conditions, we would probably wouldn't make it past our first class because we'd be getting slammed on concrete. Right. But we train in this this environment where we can we can get used to this level of stress and this this stress inoculation, this um, this level of intensity that most people are not comfortable with. Most people, you know, fight or flight, they freeze up because they're not yeah. used to having someone grab them, and we become very comfortable with that. And so, I, when I see a lot of the self defense people. And I, I've been to a self-defense class. It was like this. We were catching punches. Yeah. I was like this. And in my head, I'm looking at him like this shit wouldn't work. 
like you're gonna you're gonna catch a punch like have you ever like tried to catch a, a, a real punch like a, a guy who can actually throw a hand a good hand like yeah. like try to catch, i mean this is not gonna work right um there, there and i'm not saying again could it work it could work i'm not saying you couldn't develop that technique but there are much simpler techniques that are going to use much bigger like gross motor patterns big movement patterns instead of like these little small ones to do the do the deal right and get take, taken yeah. care of but yeah. again and but we never trained it live i was like because when we were done we were practicing it but we never actually trained it live i was like well in my head i'm thinking okay if we want to test this out let's put some gloves on and uh, let's see if we can pop each other in the face a little bit yep right and i think that there i've seen jiu-jitsu gyms do self-defense right where they turn into more of a fighting situation and basically you can essentially fight with jiu-jitsu like 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 a, a great example would be um um, um what's the one with the slap uh sport uh, combat jiu-jitsu that's, jiu that's, yeah. that's kind of a great like intermediate intermediary i think so well, you know yeah. because you, you you can get a little you can get a little stimulus of oh snaps i just got hit but you're not taking brain damage um or yeah. if you have like some good like some good training partners you can put the gloves on and basically see how that works yeah. But if you're training a self-defense situation, if you train self-defense, but you have never actually have someone trying to hit you in the face with a punch, you're just playing with yourself. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's sort of mass. It's like, it's like masturbation, right? It's like, it's not, you're not really, <laughs> do, you're, you're not really doing anything because yeah. again, it, it goes, con it goes contrary to everything else that our martial art is based upon. It's a bad simulation. Yeah. It, yeah. it is. It, there's no simulation. It's, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it, you're, you're, go you're going through tutorial mode. But you never actually go into the yeah. hey now let, let's test it out. I, I think the glove, the <laughs> if you train self defense, like in a, if you do self defense in jujitsu class, I think having some type of gloves on is like or some type of like light striking is, is huge because like oh I can't play this I can't play this this position. I mean it it just really because you, you you feel it and, and even in the combat jujitsu, I mean man, some of those dudes are getting knocked out. With open yep. hand slaps, you know they're getting knocked out. So like it's it it does put more of a like as realistic as you can without it being a street fight. You know I think it does, and we've done that in the past. I actually enjoyed it a lot because it was like, oh, this is not going to work in a fight. This is not you know this type of playing, this type of guard, this type of positioning is not going to be you know what you want to be playing with. So um, that that way to 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 train it, I think is is hugely. I feel like that's kind of the link to it um let, let me ask you this chewy do you think that like as far as maybe one thing that could be considered watering down jujitsu is seeing like you know <coughs> obviously social media is very popular everybody's on social media looking at techniques people put up a bunch of flashy techniques and you're like that shit would never work having a lot of those techniques out there you think that waters it down or if people are working some of these techniques and not even like the thing is not some of these techniques wouldn't even work in a tournament you know i'm not saying like in the street but even in a tournament and that's kind of what we're looking at too like what works in a live tournament setting as well um some of that stuff probably wouldn't you know some of these flashy techniques yeah and, you know and again uh there's a lot of stuff that i see online and again some of it can look flashy and then you like actually do it you're like oh this is actually fairly simple then sometimes yeah, it's yeah. stuff sometimes it's stuff like you're looking at it and, and, and you know a lot of black belts it's not just me a lot of black belts look at it and go oh, that wouldn't work we just know yeah. you yeah. can look at it. You can just tell. Um, I, I think the sad part about it is, is that we live in a time where, again, everybody is desperate for attention, right? Like, yeah. and, and I don't mean this in the sense of like, you know, like, oh, whatever. It, it, everybody's trying to get eyeballs, right? And everybody's trying to get eyeballs on them. So what do they do? They, um, they'll say, like, for instance, here's an example. Um, you will see a lot of jujitsu guys just start just trolling people trolling each other back and forth and staying just saying like crazy stuff because it creates freaking stupid drama yeah. you know now again i don't like doing that stuff but again people eat it up they love it it's like it, it's like a soap opera form so they it's like it just instead of days of our lives it's like as the mat turns they sit there <laughs> and you know like start listening to these guys online go back and forth with each other as they do ever more stupid and extreme yeah. things or talk to each other and you see this all over the internet right it's like there's this constant ramping up where, you know, oh, this isn't getting eyeballs anymore. Let me do something else. Let's be a little bit more extreme or whatever. And yeah. so with the techniques, you get these people where instead of like, again, the stuff that works isn't always the most exciting, um, but it, it works. Get the likes. That's right. 
it, it, it does get the likes sometimes, but it may not get as many likes as if you do some real fl real flashy thing. And yeah. again, you can still package good, simple stuff into a good like little package there, right? The thing that I think that some of these guys forget about is that, okay, let's say that you show something flashy. If that person never actually is able to do it, they're not going to get any success with it. And they're not going to come to associate you with good stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. one of the things that I can say is that like, again, I have integrity with this and like, I will not show stuff that I don't think really works stuff. I wouldn't show the students in the gym stuff I haven't used. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I've got a few criteria, and like, I won't do it unless, you know, so and, and, and there's been a couple of times where I'm like, I'm playing around with this. And even if I'm playing around with it, it means I hit it during a live role with like a decent opponent, not like one of my brand new white belts. Yeah. And so with that, what ends up happening is, is over the years, people have come to say like, yeah, he may not be the most exciting extreme guy, but when I try his stuff, it usually works. Or when he gives me an idea, like it tends to be helpful. Like it, yeah. they come to associate me with that. And so I think it's, it's, it's short-term thinking, right? Like you're looking for a big old, like a video to go viral, to get a lot of likes or whatever, yeah. but you're not thinking about, well, what's that going to do from you, for you and your brand or your business or whatever you're trying to do in 10 years from now? Um, it's like sometimes with students, I've seen people going back to the business idea. I've seen some gyms before sort of abuse the, the student base that they have, abuse the trust that they have with their students for just monetary gain without thinking about how it's going to support the students on the other end, right? And that's short-term thinking because sure, it, you'll get a little bit of money in the interim right now, but then give that like 10 years and all of a sudden your gym's empty because you've continuously done that and you've built uh, bad connections with everybody. Whereas if you always made sure to focus on, look, I will do my best, but I'm always worried about like, what are they going to get for this? Then again, if that is the first thing you're thinking about, then again, yeah, you may not have the big swings upward, but what you'll have is steady consistency with people because they will come to associate you with good stuff, taking care of them and treating them the right way. Now, as far as whether that waters things down, it's not going to do anything because people won't use it. It's like people look at it and they go, wow, that's really cool. But as you, well, you and I both know, most of the people that fall for the, the real like weird stuff that like isn't going to work is usually like white and blue belts. And they're not going to be able to put it together anyway. So they're going to look at it. And, and, and to be honest with you, man, most people like don't like on Instagram, they just kind of scroll anyway. And so like I've talked to so many people and they're like, how many techniques have you actually used off Instagram? You know, and maybe a couple here or there, but yeah. like, you know, you're watching them every day and you've only got a couple. And I think it's from the short term, the, the short term, like the short form content idea. Um, again, it's like potato chips. You're just gobbling them down, but it's really not satiating. You're not really getting much from it. I think if you, if you're really trying to absorb a technique, you need to like get space and like watch this thing and study it opposed to just going through it. I don't think it waters anything down because people just won't use it. And so what ends up happening is, is, as the old adage goes, the cream rises to the top. The right. best stuff, the best stuff, will keep coming up to the top, and people will hang on to it. Um, and that's the way that it works, right? And yeah. I've, I've, I've just seen that. I've seen that even from the short time in the last, was it almost? We're getting, we're getting close to ten years now on YouTube doing that stuff. I've seen people come and go, and I've seen people who went like the flashy, like, like look at this really cool thing route. And then it just kind of doesn't go anywhere because again, they're not thinking about it strategically. So it's not going to water anything down because it's not going to work. Um, can't water anything down if it doesn't stick, uh, <laughs> you know? So that said, I think sometimes, you know, it's important to come back to the roots of jujitsu as far as the fighting aspect yeah. and understanding, like you said, just every now and then understanding like, Hey, like, you know, I, I, I really like to invert during my matches in sport jujitsu. But in a fight situation, I need to pull guard um, or be, in a, be more of a closed guard or uh, maybe even a butterfly or a, sort of a really tight open guard and controlling the wrists and triceps and stuff like that to manage distance and just understanding how those yeah. skills work. I think it's a good thing from time to time to do. Yeah, I, I think on the flip side, you know, <laughs> these Instagram or whatever, these short form content um kind of videos i think it can start kind of to jog some interest you may see a technique this that may true. interest you and you're like oh let me go down the rabbit hole so that could like maybe i want to uh research this more and then you may go into an instructional and you know go to fanatics go to your stuff go wherever and and maybe even like i think that's the other piece we're getting to now you've got some I'm, again there's 
anybody can put an instructional out, but you also have some of the guys that are the best and some of the women that are the best in the world, tried and true techniques, have athletes that win at the highest level consistently and athletes that win at the highest level sharing their content, you know, through longer form. So if like if you, the information is more readily available before when it was like, remember you used to get like lesson plans or techniques through fax or something, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> or borrowing a, or, you know, borrowing a technique or borrowing like a video cassette and recording it. And you could techniques weren't as readily available and you find you can learn now from the best in the world at, at, you know, at, at your computer or at your phone. So I think like in that way, you actually have access to the best techniques, the highest level techniques. So in some ways that really, I feel like makes jujitsu a little bit less watered down because the best techniques are kind of out there for you to consume. Yeah. And the thing is, is when you actually look at like, again, someone that's been around jujitsu for 20 years now, um, 20, well, 21 now, jujitsu, <laughs> yeah, jujitsu has gotten better, right? hundred percent. Like, yes. When I, when I look at jujitsu from when I started, we've gotten better, right? Like people talk about, I've seen this idea of watered down. I would take any of like, I, I just, I think anybody like a, of, of this era for the most part would mop up people from when I first started. Yes. Um, not that it, not that they weren't good. It just, the like you said the first off the technique the proliferation of techniques right the spreading and the growing of techniques has has just been insane um you know the techniques have the positions have pretty much always been around but the way that they're used there's so much more depth to it um overall there's better takedowns in jiu-jitsu yes people pull guard and that's a that's a strategy that people can play but overall when you watch jiu-jitsu competitions now <clears throat> you will see some really good wrestling and good takedowns um, in jiu-jitsu that did not exist back in the day. Because, I mean, again, I was a high school wrestler with just three years of wrestling, and I was coming in, and I was, like, better than everybody when I first started, minus every now and then when I would run into a college wrestler. Now, right. like, again, now every jiu-jitsu guy that I compete against has a little bit of wrestling, even if they never wrestled, yeah. you know, and they're, and they're tougher. And, again, I think that overall the actual quality and the skill of most people is better and like you said, I think it goes back to the idea that, that there's a larger sample size. And as we try to accommodate people, one, because we're all getting older too. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to quit training, you know? So again, oh. there can be, there can be training sessions where, again, I think as we, we have more and more people in a wider range of ages, I think that there will, you're going to see this thing where there's more variation where you'll have classes that are obviously geared towards the competitors, the hard nosed people, classes that are geared towards the MMA type people, um, and classes that are geared towards, you know, just your hobbyists and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one of the beautiful things, again, this is the whole idea of like living in like a, a society that allows you to just do what you want to do is you can, you can, everybody can, they can vote with their dollars. If you don't like the gym, you don't have to train there. You can go to a different gym and you will have options to train at. So let's say that you're, if you're just like wanting to train a little bit and you go to the gym and the only gym in town is the crazy hardcore competitor gym. And you're like, man, this isn't working for me. I yep. can't do this. But then you find that there's a hobbyist gym down the, down the street that just like people are training and, you know, they compete every now and then, but really they're just, they're just training and hanging out with each other. That might be the best gym for you, you know, vice versa. You could, you have these ability for people to, open up jujitsu and have different styles of it. It's just kind of like the fact that when you look back at traditional jujitsu, there were lots of different like variations and, and um, forms of jujitsu. It wasn't just like karate. There's not just, it's not just karate, right? There's, right. there's, there's Kimpo karate. There's Kyoko, uh, Kyokushin karate. There's, um, I don't know, something, there's a lot of different forms of karate, right? Sure. I don't know them all. Um, you're going to have that same thing with jujitsu where you, okay, you have Brazilian jujitsu. All right. It's, it's, it's a big blanket term just like karate is, but then you're going to have these different spinoffs, right? Like you have Gracie Jiu Jitsu, which obviously is going to have, um, be a, a little bit different than say, like, you know, if you go to like hardcore, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competition style gym or, you know, whatever, you know, you have 10th planet, which sort of means something. You have all these different variations and it's not that it's watered down. I think it's really, you have, you have more choice now than you had before where you can kind of find something that works for you and what you want. With the larger sample size, like we talked about you, we have a little more elite level athletes, like higher level athletes mm -hmm. actually come into the sport. You got like, you know, um, I saw Rita, who's like, you know, like a freaking built 
you know, tall and Muhammad Ali, who's just like an athlete. He can do backflips and stuff. You know, well, you got even guys, all the college wrestlers, like because okay, like you, yeah. you got a lot of you know D one, D two, NAI wrestlers that are getting into jujitsu, and they're they're like they're set athletes, right? Like, yeah, um, you know, I'll, I'll toot toot his horn a little bit, like, but like even like Brandon, Brandon is not an average human. Right, like the guy yeah. who was in high school never lifted a weight, and he was already jacked. Right, I know. Right? Six pack. What's his deal? Yeah. He's, so I mean, he that that dude's genetically different than the average person. Um, just like if you go to an NFL game, right? Like he, those are different humans. They're different sizes. They're huge. Yeah. You're you have a two hundred and seventy five pound man running across who's like running like a, a four nine forty or something. Yeah, yeah. And then with wrestling and high and like D one D two wrestling and AI, these are athletes. These yeah. are stud- These are not guys that are just kind of. You know, I was thinking about doing like these are stud athletes and they're getting into jujitsu. So you're getting more and more people from other athletic endeavors coming into jujitsu. Um, you know, and uh, there's been plenty of really good athletes from other sports um, and people that are like you said, like Haisan, who's just a really athletic guy who's, you know, he's a he, that's a, such a, a uh, like there's not many people that look or, you know, move like him. Right. Right. So. Right. And then, you know, we, as far as like the other thing is like, we add strength training in the mix, right? We add smarter training tactics, smarter rehab taking. I think, you know, myself, like I've learned so much on how to rehab or how to kind of help optimize somebody's joints and their, their mobility, like for, for jujitsu. And you start to learn some of that stuff and we start to figure out, okay, what's some signs or some red flags of, Hey, maybe you're kind of overworking, you're overusing your body or you're, you're maybe more susceptible to things. And we're able to kind of keep people on the mats and training at a higher level for longer. Um, I think there's just a lot of like the training tactics, you know, we're, we're learning to train people and we're learning to train ourselves because before they said the weaker, smaller man is, you know, the, or the person that's going to work in jujitsu that's just gonna be effective that's who jujitsu is for it's for those people until you've got people that are athletes that know jujitsu and then that's mm-hmm. then you need that you need to be stronger you need to weight lift you need to do things that kind of supplement your jujitsu which in turn makes a higher level athlete a higher level competitor and a more effective jujitsu practitioner um chewy let me ask you this uh, um do you think and this is kind of your opinion you've been around for you said 21 plus 21 years is it easier to get promoted now than it was? And that's kind of a hard statement or a hard question because it depends, right? It depends on um, the gym, but maybe just your personal experience. Do you think like, hey, this person may have not gotten a blue belt or a purple belt back in the day and they will now or something? Yeah, it depends. Again, it depends on the gym. Um, yeah. You know, so I, it, it's definitely a little bit easier at our gym to get promoted than it was back in say 2011 or 12. Um, but you know, back then probably I was a little bit stingy almost with the belts, probably had yeah. barely ever gave away. The thing that changed my mind was again, having students who were older, who were putting in the time, who were progressing, they were getting good, but at the same time, you know, they're 45, they're 50. Yeah. They're not going to hang with a 25 year old who eat, who, who might have the same technical ability. So is that person not a blue belt because they can't beat a competitive blue belt, you know, 25 year old. Right. And so I think it just changed my mind of what I think it is, you know? Um, and also to like, what does black belt mean? Does black belt just mean that you beat the brakes off of everyone, like every yeah. round? Um, is that, is that all it means to get a belt? And so I really think it comes down to, um, you, you know, every gym has a different philosophy, right? Cause I've seen some gyms where it's like, they won't promote someone to the next belt until they win some really big tournaments. Um, and they'll sit there and they're all about competition. That's cool. That's their deal. Yeah. We're not that way, right? Like we obviously compete. We have some guys that do compete very well, but at the same time, we're more of like a big gym family and we like training and, and whatever. Um, for us, it's like, it, it's like, we have our, we have our guys that are killers, or, you know, our, our mm-hmm. guys that are like the equivalent of like special forces guys, right? The guys that we know are our toughest. We know who they are. Yep. Um, and then we have people are, that are like our, our regular guys, you know, but um, it's not like they shouldn't be rewarded for lots of years of training, um, lots of progress that they've made, lots of dedication that they've um, put forth, you know? So I don't think it's, it's wrong to reward that, you know, because again, at, at some point, the, the standard would just keep rising and rising and rising until everybody was white belts. And they couldn't beat the next blue belt in front of them or whatever. So therefore you don't ever get promoted. So yeah, I think it's a little bit easier, but again, easier in, in a sense that I think it's just, 
we're we're again we're we're comp we're adjusting to this larger sample size yeah. right and basically allowing them to participate in the reward system that we have instead of saying oh you can't train like a 25 year old or 20 year old 20 year old sorry this isn't the gym for you we're saying okay like we're getting close to 40 or, I, or you're 40 and then you're like okay let's um let's adjust this a little bit because we're gonna we're having a wider range of ages and people in the gym and so we need to be able to, to accommodate that and so i i think that's kind of where i think about with that mm -hmm. yeah i think there's value obviously even if you have like a you know an upper level older guy or girl or whoever that like maybe their skills are not as high physically but but they can they have a knowledge of jujitsu they can teach really well and i think those are those people are very valuable because they can help bring up the younger generation and really educate and kind of maybe, Hey, here's some mistakes I made. Here's some ideas. Like, I think that can also help and it can, it can really, um, you know, build up the quality as well. I think like, it's like having the elders at the gym or, you know, the elders at, you know, in society, I think there's just because, uh, you can't, you know, kind of do the thing or compete at that high level anymore. doesn't mean you don't have knowledge and, um, really valuable information to share, even, you know, just sharing how to train a little smarter. Okay. Like, hey, yeah. I know you're training five days, six days a week, going hard every time, maybe just modify, maybe do some positional work and, you know, just doing those type of things to help some of those younger athletes build that longevity. And, you know, once like, cause there's a per, there's a time where the physical and the mental kind of align. And then you have this, like, it's like, man, I wish I knew certain things, you know, uh, I wish I could do things now, but that I could do back then physically, but like you have the knowledge, but if you can combine that knowledge with your physical abilities, that's when you have that kind of elite level athlete. And I think helping people get to that point to where you're not 25, 26 years old and your body's starting to break down and you still have a lot of years left with all this knowledge of jujitsu to be, you know, a, a better competitor or even like a, a better athlete on, on the mats. Well, and again, it goes back to jujitsu becomes this anchor for a lot of people, right? It helps yeah, them out yeah. with a lot of different things and it becomes an anchoring habit to where they can train and it, it helps their mental um, state and fitness and everything else. And should they not be able to train because we have to go really hard? Like, should, why can't we just make some options for them? Yeah. Um, like yeah. you said, it's like they, 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 they've put in their time, right? Like, um, even the Romans, like the Romans, like I was uh, reading about the way that they train the recruits. Um, the younger recruits would train essentially twice as hard as the old veterans. Um, the mm -hmm. veterans, they, they basically, the veterans had a lighter uh, training load than the the newer guys that were coming into it, right? And yeah. again, part of this is going to be like, those dudes are older. They've been through a lot more. So they're not trying to like grind them down to a bloody pulp too early. They, they need to use yeah. them for a little while. Um, and like you said, just because you're not able to go as hard during a rolling, there's still, you still, have, you can still teach, you can still add value to your gym. Um, you know, and I think that's something that that's more of a societal thing where we were so obsessed with youth, you know, it's like everybody's getting some sort of work done to cover up any wrinkle they have, yeah. whatever, instead of being like, this is just who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you can cover the, you can cover that wrinkle up, but that's you're it, you're still old, right? Yeah. Like it's, and it's okay. You know, it's yeah. fine. Like own that. Um, you know, and so sometimes we can, we can sort of not appreciate what people that are older than us have to offer sometimes what they have to say. That said, when I hear the argument about, oh, jujitsu is watered down, da, 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 a lot of times I start thinking about almost like the grandpa who maybe has just fallen a little behind the times mm. and says, you know, back in my day. Right, right, yeah, right. Kind of thing where it's like, yeah, okay, back in your day, a burger was a nickel, right? And and you could go and you could spend a quarter at the movies and you'd have enough for popcorn, right? But, you know, this is 2024, Grandpa. And, you know, I think sometimes with jiu-jitsu guys, they can, we, you know, and this is just with everybody, right? Like they, it's not like the, the time that they look at that was like their golden years. Right. Things have changed. And sometimes, you know, they can look at that and go, ooh, I don't like this change. And instead of a simply like giving it a try or adapting, they go, ah, oh, this, this watered down. This is terrible. I mean, it's like you look at like leg locks. Instead of saying, oh man, there's there's something to this stuff. Ah, leg locks don't work. You're giving up position, whatever. Just making up excuses. 
opposed to actually like, well, what's really going on here? And I think there's a lot of that going on where basically people have either fallen behind the times or just like we said before with flashy techniques, instead of like doing a flashy technique, you're just going to be like, ah, just as watered down. Here's my dramatic thing that I'm going to say and talk, talk trash. So you guys will pay attention to me, you know? Yeah. Um, I think there's some of that there as well, because again, if, if you kind of get left behind because of the times, the way that things are moving, you either going to have to get with the times or you can go become a contrarian and go against those and then, you know, rally against that sort of thing. Right. And there's, there's a, there's definitely a, a power to doing that. Um, yeah, just, just, you know, I think like having more people in, I think that you have like at those ends of the spectrum, you have really a lot more high level practitioners than you have some more lower level practitioners. But I think it, it, in, in the end of it all, like I think it balances itself out and it's kind of, um, I'd say it's kind of a wash essentially. I think you still have high level Jiu 